Uh, good afternoon, everyone. So sorry for this uh, technical issue delay for Coroquin today. So today we got the great pleasure to invite the uh, Professor Lao Zhao Chong from Central University, and uh, Zhao Chong got the degree from the UMass in 2005, and later he was a postdoc fellow at the UIUC for four years, and then he moved to NCU for another two years for his NRC uh, most postdoc position, and uh, then he become a faculty at the NCU. And uh, Zhao Chong is an expert on the uh, transit survey and the study. He has been a broad interest in, in using this uh, both the transit and variable star to use as uh, like a uh, measure the cosmological uh, distance and the uh, other application. So today he will talk about uh, the ZDF and the variable star research at the Central University. So let's welcome Zhao Chong's talk. Yeah, thank you. So, uh, uh, can we get a demo? Oh, it's okay. Okay, so uh, because of the technical uh, difficulty, we, we uh, start there. So, I will skip this one. Just, just say that most of the story I will talk in this uh, talk based on the polymer observatories, uh, 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 telescope, and, and, and data. So, uh, just a, that's the story. We start with the, the P48 telescope at the polymer observatory. So, it's a, it's a 48 inch, so it's 1.2 uh, meters. And then uh, this is a Smith Design Telescope. The Smith Design Telescope is a very wide field. Okay. So, and this is a pretty picture. Okay. Uh, actually, this is the one I took uh, when I was there uh, a couple years ago. So, P4D actually has a long history of sky surveying. Today, we all have involved in certain kind of surveys project at Sloan, um, which I see over here. And, and this uh, P4D has been used for the Paramount Observatory Sky Survey reports. So it become, became uh, the digital sky survey uh, data later on. So this is uh, the some pictures. And if on eBay, you still can buy the CD-ROM, not DVD, <laughs> CD-ROM. <laughs> for the trauma uh, uh, this uh, survey. So uh, then there are a lot of um, survey, um, uh, including the need, quest, blah, blah, blah. And, and you can, if you just go to, to Google uh, before they and, and, and survey, you can see the list. So this is a request. But in the past decades, um, this test was, uh, was dedicated uh, to, to, to this uh, transcendence project. Uh, it's called the PDF, and then, and then now it's called the CDF. Okay. So uh, I would call this a trilogy. Okay. So um, in the past 10 years. So PDF um, is spent on the Palma transcendence factory. Um, when they start this project, they, they thought this is a factory. The transcendence will just like but the factories um, products is keep, just keep coming out. So it, it ran um, 2009 to 2012. Just happened, I, I was moved to Taiwan in 2009. So um, then, it, later on, uh, after three years, um, there is a, something called the IPF. We ran for a couple years. And then, and then uh, now it's called the ZTF, the Circuit Transit Facilities. Okay. So Taiwan, at least at NCU, we joined in late, uh, in around 2012. So, but even though we joined late, we still have the full data right um, for the PDF, as well as then we continue to participate uh, in this uh, consortium. So we uh, have all the data access to the IPDF. Now we also have all the data uh, to the CDF. That at least, not all, but at least 80% of the data uh, on the CDF. Okay. So um, the, this is a man a uh, horse telescope. It's a P4D, it's mostly doing some imaging. And then, but for these projects, they have um, dedicated follow-up. So it, 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 they go to P60, also on Palma Observatory. And then uh, during the PDF era, this is just a, a simple uh, CCD uh, imaging with getting colors. Now in the ZDF, uh, they use for low resolution uh, IFU to get spectra for the, for the transients. So uh, this is a bit history. Um, um, just like that, imply is a transient um, survey. So it's, it's doing um, trying to find, find uh, as, as much um, uh, supernova, um, other exploding um, objects in the, in the universe. So it's a time series. Um, so there is a, there is a, if you are looking on time series data, then this, this will be a very nice data set. And then um, some, some spec is that uh, it's about one half second per pixel, uh, the, the resolutions. And then at that time, the, the field of view is quite big. It's 
uh, seven points two six, but you see that this is actually quite small by today's standards. Okay. But at the time, ten years ago, this is a big deal. This is a very wide deal. And then it, it has a single band imaging. So, uh, they, they set our 60 second exposure time, and then this is the filters. So, and then I, I won't go to the, the detail, but they will have follow up using all other telescopes. Um, for, uh, as you can imagine, mostly for the supernova, they want to classify the supernova, get the host red shift, all, all these things, right? So, so this is the, the idea. They have a um, couple of telescopes on the same observatory. Uh, the big guy is P200, it's a 5 meters uh, telescope. Very historical Tesla, and it is a T48 and it is a T60. So all enter the same um, um, uh, uh, summit. Okay? And this is this is all um, result. Don't forget this one. By today's standard, um, more all this number is, is either double or even uh, ten times more uh, in the ZDF era. Okay? So uh, I used to give a Probably talk, uh, 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 average talk on this. So, so I just have people have feeling how big is this uh, seven point three degree. So this is the the the, the uh, uh, camera um, used in the PDF. It's a it's an old CRT top care they they refurbish, and then one CD is is uh, not constant at the beginning. So so they start with eleven CCD eleven chips. So this is size of the moon, and this is size of the the M thirty one Andromeda galaxies. And for for ruling or for conventional um, field of view, is this thing. Okay. So this is a, 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 a wide view. So of course there are many results, many discoveries, and, and probably it's too boring to say. But just highlight one, uh, it's very interesting. Uh, this is the one M101 supernova. It's, it's, it's just a very near one. You know that, right? So you see that uh, they discover this uh, very young by supernova and at that time it was a news um, highlight. So what is the difference between a PDF and IPDF? Actually um, infrastructures, hardware uh, and software they are same. So using the same telescope, same CCD, same filters, same pipeline and same archive, everything is same. Uh, the difference is just the, the member. So who pay the membership money to buy. Okay. So uh, for PDF and IPDF Caltex uh, remain the PR institutions because they, they run the, the Panama Observatory. So we, we joined in, in, uh, in late 2012 uh, because of the Professor Ringgit uh, Tango project. And, and at that time, which included uh, uh, the Tsinghua as well, because we, we call this, this a, a Talenda. Um, so, so we use Talenda to join, not not, MC, not. So, But actually, it can be uh, explained to the whole Taiwan community. Another difference is that uh, PDF is survey based, so if they are, they are doing a supernova survey, but during the IPDF, uh, the PI decide to do things different. So, so now we have project based. Um, the consortium member can propose projects, or propose uh, proposal, um, then then ask for for um, certain certain way of observations. So uh, and then of course there is committee to 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 create to judge and then to to to, to select. Right? So um, there is one project. Uh, at NCU, uh, this is by Rex, he's not here. <laughs> Rex said, come and come. So he proposed this doing uh, this uh, uh, hunting for the super fast rotators. Uh, the main belt extra that, that rotate very fast, faster than uh, two hours. Um, the reason is that um, um, in, in the, in the extra communities, uh, it's well, all well known that it's what we call the two hour spin barrier. So that's mean that uh, the extra the cannot spin faster than this one, otherwise, it will break up. Okay. However, as, as in natural, always um, some, some weirdo, some, some strange, strange guy. So this guy are strange. How come they can survive um, beyond these barriers? So there are, of course, there are some theory, uh, let's say the coefficients um, in the astral world. And in, in, in uh, seven or eight years ago, only uh, two or three, only four, uh, yeah, three known um, in this, in this uh, the so-called forbidden regions. But Rex, uh, he used uh, his IPDF, he proposed a, 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 a very um, intense, oops, sorry. <laughs> oops, that's a Panova. Yeah, there's, there's, there's four reasons. It's somewhere. <laughs> okay. so, um, so he proposed a, a, a mini survey, uh, look, look, looking for this uh, high cadence um, observations, and then he discovered um, more of them. So 
the manager has uh, candidates uh, at that time. So, so there's a paper out um, in six years ago. Okay. So this is one science, and, and another science at least at NCU we are doing is uh, we are doing some PE staff studies. So um, I forgot to mention this. Yeah, oops. So um, the filters used by the PDF uh, is a is a R band and G band, but there's a unique set of H alpha uh, filter. It's four H alpha, H alpha and, and the and the, the neighboring tree. So the goal actually is, is look for the the, 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 the galaxy um, local galaxies that are um, using the emission lines and then somehow using the four filters to have a rough estimation of the redshift. So since you see H, 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 there's a H alpha imaging, so so okay, let's think. So we can do something else uh, with the H alpha data. So so that's why we carry out this uh, uh, B star studies. So they have a they have emission line stars, so they have access cross with H alpha. So you can find them very um, easy uh, using PDF uh, imaging, H alpha imaging. And we focus on the B star on the open cluster because the clusters give you an uh, age, metallicity, all these things, so we can constrain the PSR properties. And then we have uh, uh, three papers out, and then one must the thesis. And this U and that U is a different U, <laughs> not the same U. Okay? And, and uh, this is a postdoc, this is a student. Okay? <laughs> in Chinese, there are, one is U, one is U, but, but in English, it's the same. Okay? So, very quick um, summary that uh, we found that at least uh, for, for, for this number of PSR, we only uh, identify 32. Uh, sorry, 96 PSA in, in only in 32 uh, open cluster out of uh, 100. And this is the distribution of the fractions. So you can see that uh, the PSA tends to be uh, found in the young uh, uh, open clusters. Okay, so that's um, PDF and IPDF uh, is a history, it's past. So now we are in the ZTF. Okay. So what is ZTF? If I want to give you a one sentence uh, summary, uh, uh, it's this one. It's a very wide field, synoptic. Uh, this means that it is doing in three filters. Uh, it's a time series, and it's imaging, okay? And then uh, doing a modern sky using this telescope. So they are using the same telescope, uh, same loop, but now um, I see using a very wide uh, field compact uh, CCD, and the uh, field of view is 47 degrees square. Okay, if you do not have sense how big, I will show you the next slides. And then there are many improvements on the data reduction pipeline, uh, much better quality data. And then actually there are more than hundreds of improvements uh, doing here and there. On the DOOM, on the mount, let's go, uh, the, 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 the RA drive, the, 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 the circulation, the tech, um, air conditioning uh, inside the DOOM, many things. And then the most important is that uh, is funding and, and consortium. Before IPDF or PDF is a totally private um, 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 projects. So Caltech and, and, and other members uh, give you a membership. But for ZKF, Caltech decided to ask for the federal funding from the NSF, and they got that. So, so that's why um, part of the, the data will be go to the public because of the of the NSF uh, support uh, funding because of this. Okay. So this is a nice picture I don't show you. Okay. So if you go to the DDF uh, website, you will see these nice pictures. So this is a camera. So uh, PDF is this this camera, and ZDF is this uh, 16 uh, CCD. So if you put on the focal plans, the PDF uh, only cover this region, and the whole ZDF camera covered the entire focal plan on on the P48 uh, telescope. Okay. So this is uh, how big is a uh, wow. This is not. Very <laughs> Okay, uh, this is the comparisons of the field of view. So this is ZDF, 16 CCD. And then this is the, the you guys know which the C is, is crazy. Uh, it's not here, sorry. Uh, this is a uh, DF backhand. This is the pan star CCD. Uh, see it's over here. And, and PDF is, is this one. So, so I said the, the ruling one meter threshold is this small uh, blue box. Okay. So, and now, now the Andromeda. Uh, as you remember, it filled up the, 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 the PDF uh, uh, camera over here, but now it's con it can fit in one chip of the of the GTF camera. So uh, and this is this alright by the way, this is Peter just right here, the real stars. 
So in the, in the winter times, you go see the, the, the Orion. This is the one image of the CDI camera that captures. So people doing star formation will be very excited <laughs> because it's Orion. <laughs> okay. okay, so um, just some numbers. So in one hour, um, TTF can survey uh, uh, 3750 degrees squared uh, of the sky. If you do not have sense how big, how fast is this one, remember the pose I mentioned before. It takes a couple years to finish of the, the pose survey. Let's say we, we forget the sun. GTF can do the whole pose project in 24 hours. This is how 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 big, uh, how powerful uh, uh, the GTF uh, new camera. Okay. So it's a it's a 16 CCD, uh, it's a 6K. Uh, okay. Also give me the one R second uh, uh, resolution per pixel. So now the exposure time is reduced to half. You still can reach to depth about 24 five. Okay. Ah, uh, so okay. Sorry to Please let me make sure if the entire coast is the same as entire northern sky. Northern sky, yes. Okay. From the from the okay. Paloma Observatory, not the southern okay. sky. Okay. Northern sky, yes. Okay. Yes. What's the readout time? Few seconds. It's a, it's a four quadrants. So so one chip read out four uh, four quadrants. So they are independent sixteen. Read out, so it's totally different. Sixty-four read out. So here's the number. Uh, read out time. This is used to be fifteen, but they can reduce to less than ten seconds. Read out time. So again, this is uh, the number uh, three times away. It's whole whole northern sky in eight hours. So if you do a, a simple conversion, is uh, every point in the sky they can have uh, more than two hundred fifty. Solutions. So this is a comparison between the PDF and CTF. Uh, the errors becomes um, much bigger, and the OLED time, the read out time, uh, uh, becomes shorter because of the new technology. And then the exposure time has been reduced. That means that uh, the survey areas uh, is 15 times improved compared to PDF. And if you consider the the, the, the depth, this is a 12 times improvement. So this is comparison of the CCD. Oh, just a, uh, not the real one, but the, the drawing. So for those doing hardware, um, you might find this uh, very interesting. So this is a T48 uh, uh, telescope. This is a primary mirror. So um, the, the entire TDF uh, camera actually is quite compact because it's trying to block too, too much light. So it has to sit in this uh, prime focus over here. So this is really, the shuttle is in front, okay, and then the filter slot is over here, and there's a robotic arm to grab the filters and change. Um, it takes more than a minute um, to do this, so actually they try to avoid changing filters in a given night. Okay. And then this is a graphic box, and then it has a paper out to uh, describe more details. So this is the reality, it's really there on the telescope, and this is the size of the filters, um, the, the filters, this big. Okay, so this big. Okay. And and uh, it, the GTF using the GRI filters, and then uh, it's very similar to Sloan and, and the Penstar. So it just, this is just comparisons uh, of the of the, the transmission curve in these three uh, three three uh, bands. And the the, the photometry is carried to the Penstars. Okay, so it's already tied to the Penstar system. Okay, so this is the some um, uh, sky performance uh, from the commissioning and, and maybe some first year data. So this is the sea, um, it's Paloma, it's in the Northern California. I'm oh, sorry, Southern California, it's not in Chile, <laughs> so, so you won't go to here, <laughs> so, but, but it's, it's good enough. So you can see the median is two, so that's why they choose the one R second for pixel resolution, uh, because of the median two C um, in, in the Paloma Observatory. Okay. And this is the, the, the distribution of the, 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 the depth, that go, uh, the median is around 10.5, so over here, but sometimes can be even uh, deeper. Okay. okay, so um, because of the uh, NSS funding, uh, we have private funding, so and then also the Caltech, so, so the GTF observations or the data is, is divided into three, three parts. The Caltech time, the partner time, including an NCU or, 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 or Taiwan, and the public time. So the private, uh, uh, we have 40%, and then this profit, they, they're doing the, the MC uh, program, it's, it's 40%, so this data is probably available, and then the count is 20%. So, um, 
So for the public survey, they are doing two, two uh, sub-survey. Uh, one is the, is the um, uh, astral kinetic, uh, 3D cadence, mainly for the supernova. And they also have the kinetic tank survey, the one-day cadence. And they only do it in G and R, R band. Uh, because the I band is purchased using the private money. So, so, so the I band remains for the private. And now they have a third data release uh, just two months ago. Uh, but for the for the tranches, you need to know the, 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 the discovery immediately. So the alert the, the alert uh, is going to release to the public immediately. So this is in case you are doing tranches, you'll be interested. If not, then you can just worry. Okay. So uh, some milestones. Uh, in in a couple of years ago, uh, the first slide, and then uh, the, the real survey started in March 17, uh, two years ago. And then and there are some first discovery stuff. Of course, the list keep going on to go in. I, 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 just too much, so I skip the rest over here. Okay. And this is the sky that can be seen from the color mark. So you can see, you can see the southern sky. And this is just a project survey, just only the 40%. And then, in, in many areas, it's like more than thousands uh, uh, observations. So so we can imagine. If you, are, you want to do a time domain, uh, this is a very nice data set. So um, this is the GRI uh, distribution. T is the equatorial position. T is the galactic uh, plane. So the galactic plane is in the middle. Okay. And this is the, the north um, desert pole. Okay. And then this is the southern sky that you can see. So you can see GRI. I is less because um, uh, only private time is used for the I. G and I include the private time. So you can see that's a lot. Even the, even the whole northern sky is covered many, 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 many times. Okay. Um, there are many discoveries and many uh, great signs come out from the CDF. And, and, and I, I, just because of time, I won't go into um, detail or summary. But I want to give you a very unique uh, CDF signs. Uh, this is what we call the twilight survey. So normally, if you're doing optical, if you do radio, forget that. If you're doing optical, you avoid the twilight time, right? For, for doing, those doing optical, you'll, you'll understand this. However, um, GDF, they decide to, to efficiently use the twilight time to survey the inner solar system. So when, when the sun is setting, they, because of wide field, they, they, they start to look um, maybe 3 degree to 20 degree around the, 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 the sun. So um, this is morning, morning sky, uh, this is evening sky that they, they, they survey this area. So and then they discover uh, this, this object uh, in this year. Okay? So this is the first asteroid. The orbit is totally inside the Venus. Okay. It's called the uh, IVA, uh, uh, Inter Venus uh, Asteroid. Okay. The first one uh, is covered uh, uh, from this orbit. So, so the, the, this is the first orbit. This is the Venus orbit. So this guy is totally inside, inside the Venus. Okay. So, so it, other surveys uh, either forget about the twilight time or they do not have this big field of view. Uh, to be efficient uh, to do this kind of survey. So I think at least um, this is very um, unique and, and special for the CDF. Okay. So um, if you are interested, uh, of course there's a website, very simple, cdfhowtech.edu. And then there's a very uh, high level papers, um, um, project in the nature astronomy, and technical papers. Uh, there's a PSST focus issues. Um, many of the like, hardware, software, Science, early science, machine learning, all these things um, has been described in these papers. And, and, and this group, uh, they, they, they won the first first group that uh, published the first scientific paper from CDF. And this is uh, about the title um, dis disruption. Okay. So, so we are way back. <laughs> okay. okay, so in case you want to know more, uh, just, just, just Google DDF or you just, just can ask me. Okay. Including you want to interested how to access the data, um, um, I can help you with that. Okay. okay. So um, let's switch to um, uh, the, the main the main topic. Uh, like what we do, what we are doing at NCU um, when when you join this CTF. Of course, um, there is a big group, big competitions uh, within the CTF for doing transients. You, you cannot imagine that type one A group, type two group, and and and, and other other groups. So 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 they are they are very big. So so we try not to touch um, their their functions. We are doing other things. So so we focus on asteroid uh, because of the racks. Uh, it's not here. 
see, he's not here, okay? So he continued doing his super fast uh, uh, rotators, and I just found out that he would give a talk uh, in, in, in November, <laughs> maybe you wait until that time he tell the stories of his asteroids, okay? So another, another uh, topic is that uh, it's variable star, but because of the expertise at NCU, you uh, have a B star experts, we have a, a variable star experts, at least for me it's oxygen stars. So, so we, we have, it's called the GHS BEV program, it's uh, investigate the BE star, very big, uh, at least for fans, uh, BE stars. So uh, this thanks to the postdoc Chandras, you probably know this guy, the BE star expert, and then uh, Bojay Yu, uh, he's now the faculty at the, the Yuanzhi Dao Xue, it's a private university, also in Zhongli, and then of course the PhD student, um, they work most of the stuff, not me, okay. So, so, so they are the hard work uh, persons. Uh, just a one slide uh, reminder: what is a BE star? Okay, they are they are they are three type star. Uh, non super jet testing, they are they are main sequence, uh, early type stars. And, and E is the emissions, so they have farmers emissions, they have strong uh, emission lines. And they also are fast rotators. Okay, they they, they can they rotate uh, close to the critical uh, uh, velocities uh, or speed. So they form the, what they call accretion disk. Is it accretion disk? They, they form to create this. So there's a disk associated with the B star. Okay. And then because of this, there are a lot of, uh, they, they show variabilities, and sometimes this is referred as a, a gamma Cassiopeia uh, variability. Okay. So this is just a, 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 some flavors of, of, of the B star variability. It's complicated, it's not periodic. Uh, it's, it's, uh, it's, there are many patterns. Uh, there are some of them uh, described in these papers. There's an outburst. <laughs> There is a, a, a some regular hours, there are some, some unit eclipsing and some, some non-radio pulsation. So so these cycles are, are, are kind of chaotic and, and, and no, no uh, fixed patterns. So one B star and another B star, the variabilities can be quite different. Okay. Anyhow, um, this is all we call the, the GCS uh, uh, gamma Cassiopeia uh, variable star. So it's an erotic, irregular variable star. They call it B star emissions. Okay. So, um, so uh, we think that we can use uh, this GTF data set to study uh, further on, on this B star variability. Uh, mainly because the, almost all the previous flows they study on the bright B star, only um, part of 30 map. And GTF can extend to 20 map, so, so, so there is a lot of room. Uh, at least study the fan has been very far away uh, B star. So we have this, this plot, uh, roughly you can uh, call it high scale uh, uh, when uh, during the uh, ZTF of um, um, surveys. So this is just one example, uh, three commissioning, uh, we just want to test its real world. This one known B star, uh, this is called right curve, and the ZTF right curve, you can see uh, the, 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 the shape, right, how they change, more or less um, match uh, this, this core right curve. So, so, well, give us some confidence. Uh, yes, we can use uh, GDF to study the B star variability. How many? Um, 300 B star in, the, in our, our list. So go ahead and, 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 and mine the, the GDF uh, data and the light curve. And then this guy pop up, uh, his old pop. Okay? On the same track, uh, it's classified as a B star, but uh, it has a very unusual uh, light curve. It shows this kind of big, um, uh, in the light curve. This is about two, two and a half magnitudes uh, uh, deep over here. So the brightness slightly decreased by two and a half magnitudes. Even though I mentioned that the B star variability is complicated, but this is unusual. This is very rare uh, in, in the B star. So if this star caught our attention, and we also found that there's only one paper mentioned about this star <laughs> in, in the same time. Wow, okay. So, so, so we decided to, to investigate this, uh, this B star further. So we collect uh, as much data point as we can, including our own uh, uh, loading observations. So altogether, we collect uh, 28,000 uh, data points, all the way from, from about 100 years ago, 1894. <laughs> this is from the DASH project. It's a, it's a plate, power plate, um, and then the touch team, they convert the, the plate uh, measurement to the, to the digital measurements. So this is a, a, a century ago data point. And then this more recent one, this is some 10 stars, 10 stars is here, Y data is here. And then our ruling observation is, is over here, it's, it's now it's, you can see very dense. And then there is some ZDF data, and ASO data, and, and the ASAS data. 
So we try to uh, compile and collect uh, as much as, as data points as we can. Now you can see there are, there are GIFs pop up here. There are some, something, uh, uh, what we call outputs come up. And then, uh, and then, uh, uh, maybe, uh, uh, what do we do? Uh, I have some questions. Yeah. Uh, so the horizontal axis corresponds to almost the linear. This one? Yeah, the horizontal axis, right? So you, you say this is, this is. Time like that, and you can ask us for how many years? Oh, this is uh, 2015, 2020. Uh, okay. And we, we, the sky is different for different panels. Okay. This is 1894. This is 2009. Okay. Ah, this okay, 2009. Okay, okay. This is 1894. 1894. Okay, and the uh, DTF is only. GTF, GTF is starting in 2017. Start, start from here. So here, that means you made you made almost all the monitoring using Google. Yeah. Where, where? So I, I want to know so where those long pass so the data come from. Speaking, no. oh. DTS is only part of them, right? Yeah, DTS is here. Uh, Luling uh, is all here. This, this is uh, AS, AS, Assassin. Okay. AS, AS, SN is uh, all skies away for uh, Supernova. So it's this guy. Uh, this is Penn Star okay. and Wise. This is Dash. Dash. Okay. Dash. Yeah. And, uh, this is uh, okay. AS, AS3. It's, it's a precursor of AS, 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 SN. So um, I cannot see the problem, but I've got access to the Oh, this is a magic. 12 to 16, 12 to 16, 12 to 16. Yeah. Uh, so you might know the A is too faint. Yeah. So, so that that should be too faint for AVS. Yeah, some of the old data is too faint. Okay, okay. Yeah. So uh, using this, this uh, um, time series uh, light curve, so we try to find out uh, um, the complicated uh, behavior. So, so at least this part, you can see that uh, frequently they, they become brighter. Um, you get this, 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 this guy over here. This is what we call the outburst. So the outburst um, actually is not a straight periodic outburst. So on depend on the on a different uh, each years, they can change from 35 days, 31 days, 26, and even 60 days. So, so it's very uh, it's not irregular. This is the phase. Um, uh, light curve is it always uh, here, and then we repeat the cycle again. Okay, um, and this is what we call PDM analysis, uh, uh, previous uh, such analysis. So this is what we call the outputs, and then there are uh, standstill, uh, top layer, and this is what we call the deep events. Uh, it become suddenly become one magnitude or two, two magnitude uh, frameworks, and then it happened eight times uh, in the past. We, we just collect, we just put them together. Again, we try to search for the, the periods. It's more or less around 14 days, but, but it's not strict periodic. So the period actually will change. And then for the standstills, um, uh, there is a, a sine curve. Uh, after we remove the sine curve, the cycle is about four days. There is even a uh, um, uh, uh, short minutes, uh, 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 15 minutes uh, of variabilities over here. It only detect uh, uh, in 2019, December to 2000 January. After that, disappeared for some reason. So, so you can see the the, the, the sign, sinusoidal variation. But uh, later on, uh, this variation disappeared. I have no clue why 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 is that. Okay. So it is just some 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 um, examples. The complicated of the light curve of that that this fast uh, attributes. Okay. How about the, the spectrum? So we have a P60 spectra, we have a BOL in, 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 uh, in Korea, and then we have a series D, it's bundles, and then we have 200 uh, spectra. So we, we try to collect uh, given spectra. One thing is, is for sure that it's an emission line object. We see the H-alpha emission very clear okay, it's over here. We also see some other lines, uh, some uh, common to the B star, some actually are not. Okay. So, so um, and then, and then uh, because this this Q, so we, we can say that we're going to also on this time, right? We only can submit the request, and then when it's have free time, they will do the spectrum for us. So, so we try to catch uh, at the maximum or even at the peak, but we do not have that luck. So either before the maximum or, or after the maximum. Most of them are, are in this this uh, what we call standstill uh, standstill phase. Okay. So. Uh, one thing is that uh, 
once you have a first alpha emission, it's an emission object, it emission stars, and then the light curve is very complicated. So it's still a real D star. So uh, we check the Gaia distance, it's, it's a 600 uh, parsec, it's very nearby. So, and then, uh, this is the broadband photometry from, from, from uh, Simbac, from, from UV to, to, the, to the Y's, over here. And then the blue one, is assume this is a D star, and, uh, and for plus model, then we fit the, the SED. Then we have to place this D star in 16 kiloparsec, very far away. So, uh, 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 it's, it's very puzzle, okay? So, either Gaia is wrong or, or something else is wrong. Well, yeah, of course, Gaia is right. No worry. Okay. So, but if you assume this is a soft drop, okay, and at some very high temperatures at Gaia distance, this is a green curve. It can equally fit well to the uh, broadband uh, photometrics. So, so now we, we say that uh, this guy actually is not a B star, but a hot soft drop. Okay. So, um, now, HO pop is not a B star. Okay, but uh, something called the IWAMT type drop NOAA. So why 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 we know that? Uh, when we have this finding, we try to write the papers, we send to the the, the, the booking group in the ZPF, and, and, and one person uh, in, in the Caltech in the booking group, he wrote me back. Are you sure this is uh, not a not a, a, a drop NOAA? Because he said that uh, please check out this paper. Okay, this paper has been published in in, uh, in here SK. He also mentioned this HO pop. And then he said that this, this star actually is an IWND uh, uh, object. So, so this is the, 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 the discovery that, that he makes a uh, 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 couple, couple, Taishi couple in, in Kyoto industry. To be honest, our group is not a drop NOAA expert. We have no idea, <laughs> or we don't, know, we, don't, we don't know much about the drop NOAA before this. So once, once um, we found that it's a drop NOAA, Chandra's, uh, he, he, he read a lot of people about the, the NOAA, all these things. Okay. So this is a typical light curve of drop NOAA, uh, this one example. And this is a visual pop and another light curve. So there are some similarities uh, in terms of the, of the light curve behavior. Okay. And then if it's drop NOAA, it can explain why uh, it can fit with this, this uh, uh, SED, but not this one. Okay. It's, now it might make sense. It's really not this uh, but, but, uh, but a NOAA, drop NOAA. So, um, in, in, in Kimura paper, they, 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 they have this model to explain this kind of uh, light curve behavior, uh, which, sorry, I won't go into detail. Uh, just so you know, it's a, it's a tilt disk. Um, uh, Top NOAA is a binary system. So, the disk is tilted with um, respect to the, the orbital plane. Okay? So, this is the model predictions, how uh, there is no tilt and this is on degree of tilt. And you can see that the light curve changing like that. For different Accretion uh, mass, uh, red, and this is a comparison of the light curve. You can see some similarity to pop up, pop up, and then and then we go a little bit, we go a little bit, we go a little bit. So at least uh, the model that, that they have um, can can uh, seems can uh, describe the behavior of the of the of the light curve of this guy. Okay. How about the dips? So tomorrow at all they, they do not model the dips because they say that it's just too complicated. However, another group, another these persons, um, they, they have um, this uh, mass varying, uh, so the time varying uh, mass transfer. If you, let's say you play around the mass transfer rate uh, for different components, these are two components over here, you can get this kind of dip. It's almost the same order, uh, 2.5 or more than 2 magnitude uh, uh, decrease in brightness. So this is, this is the light curve that they explain in this paper this, for this guy, V513 cast, you see the light curve. It's very similar to this old pop. Okay, so then that's a deep, that's a deep, that's a deep here. So at least um, their model uh, can explain this. So 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 um, now I think of course we believe this is really a a, a, a drop nova and not a B star. Later on, actually um, we found that B star and, and this type of uh, drop nova they share many similarities. So we try to summarize them. Okay. Emission line, they have helium lines, they have also uh, early type stars, they have very similar light curve behavior, except uh, maybe uh, this, this uh, uh, emission line, uh, uh, these lines over here. 
So actually the best way to, 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 to find to discriminate them is, is using a distance. Let's say you have Gaia distance or other methods, and then you have program photometry, you can estimate the symbol S E D. Or if you have well calibrated flux flux calibrated spectra, then then do a better S E D fitting. If not, then you can use this for uh, uh, they, they call it the Bowen forensic line. So this is the, the, the carbon at the neon lines uh, over here. This only can be seen on the drop nova, not on the B star. B star do not have this line. So if you detect this line, it's very really sure that uh, it's a it's a it's a, a drop nova. So uh, so this is the original paper, the title of the papers. We, we thought we have a quick discovery, a, a, a very unusual B star. Uh, and then we have to throw to the, the cycle beam. Okay. And then now we change to this 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 uh, uh, title, and then we submit to the to the uh, uh, ABJ. So a uh, few weeks, maybe three weeks later, strangers actually will come here and, and talk about this paper in more detail. So I just give a very uh, uh, high level overview. So so why why so special about this guy? Uh, for this type of road ANT drop NOAA, there are only six of them currently known. So this guy I think is, is the is the seventh uh, of, of this family. So so in this case is 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 quite a, of a rare rare object. Okay. okay. So so there's one lesson we learn from here. Don't believe what you see. <laughs> you thought it's a B star, end up it's not a B star. Okay. So okay. This is another story about uh, don't believe what you see. Okay. Uh, now let's move to the the field that I'm familiar. Uh, R rabbit. Okay. Actually, uh, this this stuff is is uh, from from doing other project. Uh, when I was doing other other stuff, I found I found this paper, and then after that I found that there's some tr some problems on, on, on their findings. So what this paper is do is, is doing is that they try to search for the extra tidal R rabbit in the Mercury global clusters. Because of the global cluster, as you know, they orbit around the halos. They are not a solid body. So so. So the tidal interaction will, will, will have a tidal chaos uh, live out from the global clusters. And RRE is a good tracer because they are bright and you can use them to, to get the distance. So, so if, if you can find these guys, you can try to constrain the orbital motion of, the, of this global cluster. At the end, constrain the, 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 the galactic potential, right? Uh, all these things. So in this paper, they, they, they use uh, the Gaia DR2. Uh, they found that only 11 out of 56 global clusters have um, what you call extra tidal RRA. And this guy had 5, 5042, NGC 5042 5. So this here. So this arrow is to the very center. This arrow is the promotion of the global cluster. And this is the 5 uh, extra tidal um, RRA. And this is the, 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 um, the, the area that you see. This is about 2 thirds of the tidal radius. This is about 3 tidal radius. So this, this, these four guys, um, they concentrate in this, this uh, part. Hey, this was interesting. Okay. But when I doing other project, I, I found this paper and then I checked the image. Hey, what happened? This, this is a near, nearby global cluster. It's called 5053. And, uh, and the, um, the red box are the, the five extra titles are uh, defined by, found by the papers. And then the green cross are the known RRA in this <laughs> global cluster. They missed and uh, miss uh, mistakenly this as a as a, uh, uh, a member of, of this this uh, global cluster, and then this is the boundary that, that they, they do the search. So so it's really they, they mistakenly uh, take this guy uh, think it's a member of this one. Actually, it's not. Okay, it's it's, it's belongs to them. So why why they why they will pick up? Uh, one reason is that these two global clusters actually have very similar distance. So if you call the distance models, it's even closer. One condition that they use to find the RI is that they have to locate it along the horizontal branch. So you can see that uh, the RI in, in either galaxies, they are very close to each other on the horizontal branch. So if you just use that criteria, you mistakenly pick up the RI from another global cluster, uh, one, one or another. More, even worse that uh, they have very similar probable motions. So if you use a probable motions criteria uh, in the R and that, so, so just, just think that the, 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 all the stars inside these circles belong to that, that, that uh, uh, global cluster. This is NGG 5042, 5053. So you can see that if I use 5053 as selections, all the RRI in 5042 will become the members of that, of that uh, cluster. So, so that's why um, 
you, you really cannot distinguish. Uh, uh, you just you do not see the picture of the image. You, you, you just use the promotion and CMD. You mistakenly identify um, the, the member from one cluster to another. So, so that's why I have a, I, I, I did this. So, okay, if they are not, are there any uh, IRA um, that belong to the SL title uh, of these two clusters? So I try to search um, the known IRA um, in, in these uh, uh, big circles over here. Then, and then I check, check their promotions, motions, their CMD, and there are three candidates, but it turned out that uh, they are not. The closest guys is this, these guys over here. They are also here. Actually, this guy also picked up by, by the papers. Um, is, is, um, is, 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 is this guy? <laughs> they really picked up. So, so what, I, what I did is that I confirmed that they're, they're fine. Okay. Then later on, uh, I, I used the, the, the GDF microbe. I tried to find is there any new RRA that haven't been discovered. I tried to find uh, RRA microbe. Unfortunately, I did not find any new RRAs. Right? This, uh, at the, at the distance of these two clusters. So this came up, uh, out uh, two months ago, maybe a month ago. And this is just a light curve from the from GDF. None of them looks like RRD. You may say, how can you tell? Trust me, I can tell. Because <laughs> I'm an expert. <laughs> <laughs> it just happened that yesterday. Um, there is one paper out on uh, uh, FLPH, also on these two clusters. Uh, sorry that I did not really tell, but they said that they found some members. Not the RF, but other members, somewhere over here. Um, um, I think seven of them, somewhere. Yeah. And, then, and, and, then, and then seven stars, yeah, seven stars, uh, actual seven stars belong to these two clusters. So they have a similar pot that I have. Um, um, the, 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 the open stars are the RRE that, that we, 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 we mentioned, and, and these other stars are the, the members that they, 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 they identify. And now uh, this is the, this is the the radius, and this is the direction to credit center, and this is directions of the promotion of two clusters. So you can see the the vectors is very very similar, right? These two vectors. Okay. Okay. So um. So it's to the end. So this is a, the 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 transit factories. Uh, it got the name uh, just to honor Chris Dickey. Okay. So that, there's a quote uh, for Chris Dickey. Uh, he is the most and recognized genius in the 20th century in astronomy. So he, he was a Caltech astronomer. That's why the Caltech uh, uh, people very, very honor him. And, and, and just a reminder, I, I think you all know this. Okay. Uh, he, he is the first astronomer to, to propose that the dark matter exists, okay, the supernova, uh, the neutral star, cosmic ray, radiant lensing, uh, cosmic ray, gas cluster, and more. We know all this today, right? You should all know this. But more than 50, 60 years old, these are, these are all a real or a crazy idea, right? So, and, and he also is the first person to do a systematic search of the supernova, just like that, using eyes, not the CCD, not a camera, <laughs> using eyes. You think this is even smaller telescope, he discovered uh, more than 100 supernova, and, 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 and uh, uh, it's really uh, marked the beginning of the modern time domain astronomy. Modern way to study systematic uh, search and study the supernova. So, Chris uh, Dickey, uh, people will see this image a lot, he's a sort of like crazy guy, but he's really a really wise old man in uh, like these pictures. Okay. So, finally, uh, hopefully, some of you, I can put this uh, in the future. Hopefully, some of you will be the most recognized uh, astronomer or genius uh, uh, in the, this century. Okay. At least a young people. I don't want to be recognized. I don't want to be interested. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's right. I crossed this out. Yes, I crossed this out. Most recognized. Okay? That's right. I crossed this out. Okay? No, no UN here. Okay? So hopefully, uh, after 20 years, when I give this talk, I can put your picture here. Okay. Let me know, by the way. Uh, okay, I end with the GF team. It's a big team. Uh, it's many names. It's find my name. You want to find my names? And just to say that uh, this person, Sri Kani, is a PI. He's a, he's a main uh, person behind the, the PDF, from the PDF to uh, the ZDF. And these are the institutions. So Taiwan is under the USD, the, the Talenda, okay? and Zhang and, and Foundation is here, okay? and other institutions. So I, I finish over here. Uh, take questions.